Hi, I'm Mary Harrell for Tan Books. Catholic parents have lots of resources today for telling their children about the lives of the saints. But what about the saints who won the crown of martyrdom, often showing near impossible levels of courage in the face of torture and really awful violence. Those stories can be a bit tougher to share. One such saint is Saint Philomena, a beautiful 13-year-old girl who defied the Roman Emperor Diocletian and was ultimately martyred because of it. And Tan Books is excited to be releasing a beautiful new picture book about her life. Check out a little sneak peek. You saw it right there. The book is My Name is Philomena, and its author and illustrator is here with us today. Father Peregrine Fletcher is going to tell us more about it. Father Peregrine, thanks for being here. Thank you, Mary. It's an honor and a joy to, to be here with you and to have, uh, to have published this book with Tan. So thank you for having me. Father, is it a bit surreal to see your book here in a, in a video trailer like that, that it's a real thing now that you can hold in your hands? I can't tell you how surreal it is. That's really the right word, Mary, um, because for the last 10 years, I've been working on the book um, on my own here in the monastery cell, uh, wherever I've been sent on assignment from the, from the Abbey. So it's always just been sitting around with me here in this room or wherever I've been and to see it out, you know, uh, just on display for whoever would like to see it or read it. It's amazing. Mm, I can't imagine. That's a wonderful feeling. I'm sure. Mm, yes. Uh Father, you are a Norbertine father. You've been down with the Norbertines in Southern California, I think about mm -hmm. 10 years now. Before right. we dive into the book, uh, tell me how you ended up with that order of priests. I think you're from the Midwest, right? That's exactly right. I was born and raised in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, my uh, beloved hometown. And really, I, I wanted to do God's will. And uh, that's very broad. And to make it more specific, I really sensed a call in my late teenage years to the priesthood. And I started out uh, in my discernment process considering diocesan uh, priesthood. And I studied uh, at a local diocesan seminary, uh, Kendrick Glennon Seminary in St. Louis, a very an excellent seminary. And I was there for a long time, for six and a half years, and eventually felt that there was something else um, that God was calling me to, although I loved my experience there. And that ended up being uh, the religious life after working with my spiritual director and um, visiting various monasteries. I discovered St. Michael's Abbey when I uh, when I arrived here. Uh, I just knew it was home. So mm -hmm. I decided I was going to give it a shot and at least try it out. And 10 years later, I'm still <laughs> here. So praise the Lord. It stuck. Something stuck. You were there. Something stuck. That's it. Father, you are the master of novices for the Norbertines, right. and they are a thriving order. So I can't imagine you are bored by any extent right. of the imagination. Right. right. How did you find time then to write this book, illustrate it, find a publisher, all those things? That's a really good question. And, um, well, I think because I started out this project really in my earliest years, in my earliest you know, day, days here at the Abbey um, because I started so long ago and I didn't give myself any timeline at all. I, um, I just said, I'm going to write and illustrate this book about a saint uh, whom I love and we'll see where it goes when it goes. Uh, and um, so I worked on it when I was a novice uh, and then I became uh, a junior professed, meaning I took my first vows and lived under vows uh, uh, and then uh, later on renewed those vows and eventually made my solemn profession of vows and then was ordained a priest. And in, in, the, pro in the course of these 10 years of my time as a, as a Norbertine, I've just been periodically when I can writing or sketching and drawing 
Um, so I just fit it in in between our prayers. Uh, and when the bell would ring, I would put down my colored pencils, put down uh, the text, and I would uh, join the brothers in prayer. So it was very piecemeal. See, this is where it helps to not have an Instagram account because I, I just scroll in those times. Right. It was very helpful. My, my earliest years of being in, in the novitiate, uh, the novices are all very detached from uh, from social media so that they can really dive deep into the spiritual life, into the history of our order. And that gives a very unique environment. It also really fosters uh, creativity. Uh, the distractions are gone. Um, and so you can really see what's going on inside uh, and what do I want to do for God. And for me, uh, my superiors uh, allowed me to, to spend my free time doing this, this project. So not knowing where it would, not knowing I would be sitting here having an interview about it, you know, uh, it's just amazing. Uh, but that was the origin of it, of it all. Father, let's talk about the, the order because uh, St. Philomena and the Norbertines, this is not mm -hmm. some random coincidence that you picked her for your picture book. So tell us about the relationship and why she's special to you and them. Yeah, well, that's a really good question too. St. Philomena was not a Norbertine saint. Um, she is an ancient uh, saint um, predating the Norbertine order by centuries. But um, here at St. Michael's Abbey, I discovered that many of the Norbertines just had a strong devotion to her, as many people in the church uh, do. Um, so there isn't a really obvious connection between St. Norbert and St. Philomena, except to say that the Norbertines whom I met uh, loved her and were devoted to her. And I uh, took up that devotion because I saw it was very fruitful uh, in their lives. It's beautiful. And Father, to, to then pivot over to the saint at hand here, she has a really incredible drawn out martyrdom. She was mm -hmm. essentially, from reading your book, I learned yes, yes. she was tortured more or less for a month. She yes. then suffered, the Blessed Mother came to her, told her that she would have these three days mm -hmm. um, and then she would meet our Lord. And in these three days, were really the the bulk of the, the legend around uh, her death. And yes. there's a lot of, there's violence and there's blood. Right, um, right. How did you go about the process of depicting that, drawing it and writing it for an audience of children? Yes. Um, that was, the, the scenes re, um, revolving around her torture were definitely uh, the scenes that were the hardest conceptually to uh, design. And so I found that it was something I needed to take to prayer, um, how to really share. I wanted to share with everyone through this book, but, but, but especially children, because there haven't been too many children's stories about uh, books about her. But I realized that I, I needed to do that with sensitivity and uh, carefulness and gentleness. So I just prayed with the various scenes of her, uh, of her torture. Very often in the actual illustrations, we're seeing St. Philomena before uh, the torment or after the torment. Um, and yes, and here is, this is a, a good example. So we're seeing that St. Philomena is being led into uh, the prison cell there in Rome. And uh, that was under the command of the Emperor Diocletian. So it, many times in these scenes, uh, you're seeing St. Philomena entering into the suffering. Um, and then on occasion, uh, you might see her during the suffering um, and after. Here is a good example up on the screen right now of uh, St. Philomena being healed uh, after a great torture. Uh, and the angels we hear from the, re the private revelations re regarding her story, the angels came uh, and, and healed her as Our Lady promised uh, that, that they would. So Our Lady told St. Philomena that she would suffer, but that there would be help all along the way. So the angels would come and rescue her from being uh, thrown in, into, into the Tiber. Uh, so St. Philomena became this great hero. And it's really important to show uh, to show the suffering in some way that is also uh, sensitive to the fact that these are children. In, in this image, you have St. Philomena in the midst of a suffering here in the mm -hmm. Tiber. Um, and what is she doing? But she's praying. And I think this is really uh, important. The saints show us examples of prayer and how the Lord will, he will share with us his, his own sufferings. Um, and he's very united to us 
in our sufferings, and we can use our sufferings as the very atmosphere of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to somehow communicate to whoever is reading this book, and if it happens to be a child, that um, that it's okay that we suffer, that the saints suffer. In the end, they are victorious, and they will suffer no more. So um, I had just had to pray with each image and decide uh, the right way to do it. And frankly, I don't know if I was perfectly successful in every image, but I definitely uh, tr tried to evoke the, her story with authenticity and uh, and gentleness. Well, and I would say th maybe maybe the most successful place you've done this so obviously, but with such tender care, is that image of Saint Philomena. At Saint Philomena at the scourging pillar mm -hmm. with our Lord on the other mm -hmm. side. What a powerful image of showing that she was suffering just in the same way as our Lord. And really, I, I see in the book, her martyrdom and her suffering had perils, yes. had parallels to our Lord's yes. passion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is one of the things that we, we learned about um, Saint Philomena's sufferings that uh, because she was being tortured for her commitment to uh, to, to Jesus for the, who was her spouse um, Diocletian made sure that her torments uh, were uh, related uh, to him so this one in particular you know Diocletian said that he, that he would order her to be scourged like Jesus was scourged and so this this image I, I came up with after I was thinking how can I how can I depict that awful scene? Well, I thought our Lord has to be a part of this somehow. Um, and it, it just came, became clear that there's a kind of mirror. You used the, the, the word parallel here, and I think it's true in this case too, that uh, there's a parallel between Christ's sufferings and St. Philomena's suffering. So you, obviously these, these are two scenes that happen in two different times in history. And yet, uh, there's something in the very moment of St. Philomena's suffering that, that brought Christ's sufferings uh, to, to her. And that's true with all of us too. So hopefully when someone reads this book and sees this image, they'll realize, oh, for my suffering too, I, I can see Christ in a mirror here. And not just in, in, a, in a mirror, but reaching through that mirror and connecting to me. And, and, and so my, my suffering takes on a value and a, and, and, and a worth that uh, maybe we didn't see before. Mm -hmm. Well, and not just our Lord being in this book, but the Blessed Mother is there as well. And there's another beautiful parallel that I think children will certainly catch. Maybe adults would miss it, but children would see. In one image, the Blessed Mother, her halo or her crown is made of butterflies. And that right. imagery is repeated on at the end of the book. Tell us about that. Sure. Well, uh, this is a butterfly here in the in the very end of, of the book. And this relates to uh, the crowning of uh, the, the crown of Our Lady, that uh, the image that happens earlier on in the book, right here it is, and it can kind of be hard to see in this, but you see the uh, you see the butterfly there. To to see the full thing, you'll have to actually you'll have to see the book uh, mm -hmm. or get that. And uh, but you see that Our, Our Lady is crowned in this way, and for me this is very special because when I was illustrating this image, I was looking out my window and from my monastery cell. And uh, there, that, that, that season in California, at that time, there was uh, many butterflies. It must have been a butterfly migration, which happens periodically. Um, and I just thought, oh, that is so beautiful. And I was, I was designing her crown. And I thought, what if I just, instead of giving her a typical golden crown, I gave her a crown of butterflies. Um, and, uh, and it happened to be that I was doing that on the feast of the coronation of Our Lady on August uh, the 22nd. And uh, it, it was it was when I see that image and I see other images, I see a lot of just the local region, the circumstances of my life here at the Abbey, of what's going on around me. And they kind of made their way into the book. And there you see the little red uh, butterfly descending. And the red butterfly is representative of the martyrdom and our, that, that was uh, that was going to be coming St. Philomena's way, each butterfly has a, um, has a different color. And the, the image of butterflies in Christian symbolism often uh, evoke the resurrection. So mm -hmm. this, this red butterfly with uh, the, the color symbolizing blood, symbolizing martyrdom was approaching St. Philomena, but so was the resurrection, which follows uh, that martyrdom. So I, in a way, it's an unusual image. In, in a lot of ways, it's an unusual book. Um, and so I'm asking the reader 
to also enter into some of the mysteries of her life, but also some of the circumstances of just uh, the life here at the Abbey. So um, mm -hmm. kind of um, an unusual project. Father, tell us about the the cover of the book. That image that was used on the cover and is the book. The mm -hmm. uh, the symbols the, that are that she's pictured with there. Right. Why you put her in the in the moonlight in that way mm -hmm. on the water? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so Saint Philomena, it, I didn't. This was the very last image that I did, and that was not my plan to have this in the book at all. I finished the book. I finished all of the images, and I uh, just when I was I was. Um, what was I doing? I was searching online one day and came across this image of a person standing on the waterfront and the light was so beautiful. And I just realized to myself, I, I said, I think I need an image of St. Philomena standing on the water, the light hitting the water. She who was, you know, uh, uh, was uh, threatened to be thrown into the water. Uh, she's here standing victorious above it. And oftentimes we see uh, we think of heaven as as this great shore and this and God's uh, endless ocean, the sea of mercy. Um, and I wanted it to be this this the end of the book is the beginning of Saint Philomena's life in heaven in so many ways. And we see her here depicted with this anchor, which was su supposed to submerge her into the water and kill her. And actually, for Saint Philomena, becomes uh, this great symbol of hope, and she's rescued from this. In fact, she's holding on to the anchor, so she's in charge of this. You can't submerge her. You can't keep her down. That's the story of the saints. And you also have not just this anchor meant for the water, but you have this arrow that is lit with fire. And it was this fiery arrow that was meant to be also Saint Philomena's destruction, uh, where she was supposed to, to die uh, with flaming arrows being, uh, being uh, you know, uh, hurled at her. And uh, neither of them, neither of neither the anchor nor the, or the arrows killed her. Uh, and, and it shows that she has a power uh, with God and so I wanted both of these symbols to be there with St. Philomena standing victorious on the water, um, there standing in the light of God. I can picture no greater image for a young Catholic girl to be reading this book and to see I hope, this. I hope, I hope that, that those young girls will really see in her this model of virtue um, and a virtue that they can access when they pray to St. Philomena. I mean, my prayer is that this will be an impetus, not just to you know, read and learn about her, but to establish a, a, a beautiful relationship with this heavenly saint who is real, um, who is watching over us in this cloud of witnesses with the script, which the scriptures talk about. And she's um, a powerful saint. So I think you're, you're right on there, Mary. Father, congratulations just on this beautiful project. I'm so happy for you that this came to fruition and happy for all the readers who will read it. Thank you for joining us today. Again, the book is My Name is Philomena. You can find it here on tanbooks.com or at your local Catholic bookstore. God bless you, Father. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Mary. God bless. Take care.